detail about the embryo sac. Is it clear? Okay, so the female reproductive structure is called the gynosium. Female reproductive structure is called the gynosium. And the unit of gynosium, as today I told to you, I'm going to again tell unit of gynosium. Unit of gynosium. Unit of gynosium, it is known as unit of gynosium, it is known as the carpel, carpel oblique pistil. Carpel oblique pistil. So this is the unit of gynosium or female reproductive structure. Okay. So the unit of female reproductive structure is the gynosium or sorry. The unit of female reproductive structure will be the carpel or pistil. Okay. So now look at the structure. Uh, the gynosium represents the female reproductive part of the flower. The gynosium may consist of the single pistil that is monocarpillary or more than one pistil that is the multicarpillary. Okay. If they have the single carpel, if they have the single carpel, that is the monocarpillary. If the gynosium, yes, they have the single carpel, that will be the monocarpillary. If more than, uh, if more than, what they have been, more than one pistil, if more than, yes. More than one pistil that you can say multicarpillary. Okay. If they have the more than one pistil that you can say multicarpillary. Okay. Another term they have given the carpel. If the carpel is united, another term which is used for the carpel. If the carpel, carpel is united. If the carpel is united, this condition is called the sing corpus. Are you getting or not? I'm saying when the carpel, carpel is united. So this condition is called the sing carpus. When the carpels is united, carpel are free. Carpel are free. This condition is called the apocarpus. This condition is called the apocarpus. Is it clear? Apocarpus means when the carpels are free. And sing carpus means when the carpels are fused. So this again. Uh, Gynosium may consist of the single pistil that is monocarpillary or may have the more than one that is pistil multicarpillary. When there are more than one pistil may be fused together, this condition is called the syncarpus. Syncarpus means I told when the carpels gets united with each other. When the carpels gets united with each other, so that is known as the uh, that is known as the fused means united with each other. This condition is called the syncarpus. Okay. And there is that each pistil has three parts, the stigma style and ovary. Okay. Now I told carpel or pistil. Carpel or pistil. They has the they have three parts. Okay. Carpel or pistil, they have the three parts. I'm drawing this structure. Just look at this structure. Okay. This is structure they have given. This is the uh, unit of uh, female reproductive structure that is gynosium. And the unit is in carpel or pistil. They are divided into three different regions. So this upper portion, this is portion is known as the stigma. This is structure is known as the stigma. And a stark like structure which gets attached with the ovary, this is called the style. Stigma style and basal swollen part of the uh, this carpel, basal swollen part of the pistilar carpel or bulges part of the pistilar carpel, which is known as the ovary, okay, which is known as the ovary. So ovary means stigma, style and ovary. So these three part of the carpel are pistil considered as, okay, so carpel and pistil have how many parts? Three different parts, stigma, style, ovary. A stigma is, is the site where the landing means landing of pollen grain takes place. That is the receptive like structure where the pollen grains come and sit there. Okay. So stigma is the site where landing of the pollen grain takes place. And a style is the stalk like structure which connects between a stigma and ovary. Clear? And ovary is the basal swollen. The stigma serve as a landing platform. I told already landing platform for pollen grain. The style is the elongated slender part beneath the stigma. And uh, it is uh, involves in the connecting connection between uh, stigma and ovary. Okay. 
the basal bulge is part of the pistil that is called the ovary so basal bulge is part of the pistil which is known as the ovary inside the ovary the ovarian cavity which is known as the locule the ovarian cavity which is also considered as a locule suppose that i am drawing the structure of ovary so this is the ovary okay in the ovary they have the locule they have the different different locule is there okay so this is called the ovarian cavity or locule and the very important structure that is placenta the placenta is located inside the ovarian cavity recall the definition and types of placenta and that you studied in okay and uh, you have already studied into the uh, morphology and anatomy of chapter morphology of flowering plants in that chapter can you tell parietal placentation parietal placentation is found in parietal parietal placentation anybody do you know parietal placentation that is papaveraceae papaveraceae they have the parietal placentation can you tell marginal placentation marginal placentation yes ene solunga fabc uh fabc correct mm -hmm. fabc or that you can say leg uh, fab uh, papilionaceae papilionaceae or fabc that generally representing the what which type of placentation marginal placentation example is the p someone also told p pisum sativum p where the marginal placentation found exile placentation exile placentation yes exile placentation lemon. yes someone said uh, something can you say again abhinaya lemon very good tlc tlc tomato lemon and china rose okay so tomato lemon and china rose these three represents the Uh, exile placentation. So five different types: parietal exile, uh, marginal, and precentral and basal placentation. Okay, that you know very well. Okay, so in this way, it is saying the placenta, the placenta is located inside the ovarian cavity, which we have seen into the plasma. Recall the definition and types of placentation that you have studied in. Where we have studied, we have studied into the plus one. That that things they have given, they have mentioned here. that you have studied into the class uh, 11th that they have given okay so types of uh, placentation marginal placentation parietal placentation exile placentation precentral placentation basal placentation okay so different types of there now uh look it again what it uh, have given now arising from the placenta are the megasporangia commonly called ovule the number of ovules in an ovary may be wheat paddy mango to many papa papa whatever okay it is saying the megasporangia they have the which is i told already the technical term used for the megasporangium that is called ovule this is the pyqs the technical term the use for the ovules that is the megasporangium or sometimes they can ask in this way the technical terms which is used for the megasporangium that you can say this is known as the ovule, ovule. very good okay now uh the number of ovules in an ovary may be one if you will see the ovary this is the ovary in the ovary ovule may be one which is found into the wheat paddy mango wheat paddy wheat very paddy very good wheat paddy and mango clear so wheat paddy and mango they have the single ovule inside they have the single ovule while papaya watermelon and orchids okay if you see they have also the big ovule structure where the papaya okay where the papaya they have the more than two ovules okay so now here you can see uh the ovules ovules in an ovary may be one one found into the wheat p um, uh, wheat paddy and mango how you learn pmw pmw 
BMW, PMW, BMW that is the uh, car and PMW, P means paddy, may for M for maize and W for wheat, okay? So, no, no, M for mango, not maize. I thought maize, that will be mango, okay? So, paddy, mango and wheat, paddy, mango and wheat, which has the single ovule, okay? They have the single ovule. And many of the ovules found into the papaya, watermelon and Yes, so many of the ovules which is present in there, that is the found into the orchids, orchids, watermelon, and papaya. Clear? PWO, PWM, PMW, and PWO means papaya and watermelon and orchids. So definitely clear. Okay. Orchids, papaya, watermelon, and orchids. Clear? Is it okay? Is it fine? Okay, sir. Okay, now, yes, sir. Very good. Now, mega I told mega sporangium also told as the ovule. Let's let's look it. Let us familiarize ourselves with the structure of typical angiosperm ovule. The ovule is a small structure called attached to the placenta by means of stuff. Okay. Now look at another is the one phenomenon which is known as the mega sporogenesis. Mega sporogenesis. Mega sporogenesis means the formation of formation of functional mega spore. Formation of functional. Megaspore. Formation of functional megaspore that is called the megasporogenesis. Okay. Yes. Why we are saying functional megaspore? What we have seen in case of the uh, microspore. So there is the four microspore form that is called the microspore tetrad. Here also microspore tetrad will form. Just look at how the microsporogenesis takes place. Uh, sorry, not spore, micro, megasporogenesis. Mega sporogenesis. Mega sporogenesis. Clear? Just look at how the mega sporogenesis takes place. Suppose that this is the cell. In the cells, just wait, I'm drawing. Okay. In the cells, they have the different, different layer, which is found here. And in these cells, they have the special structure. And this structure is called the archisporial cell. This is structure which is known as the archisporial cell. Archisporial cell. Clear? Archisporial cell. This archisporial cells, again, it will divide. They form the two structure. One is called the primary, primary parietal cell. Primary parietal cell. And, and here, second one is the primary parietal cell, second one is the sporogenous cells, sporogenous cell, okay? Primary parietal cells and sporogenous cells, clear? Primary parietal cells and sporogenous cells. Now, what happened? This primary, wait one second, okay. Now, sporogenous cells, this is sporogenous cells, they are going to form my, well, sorry, mega spore, Mega spore mother cell. This will go and form the mega spore mother cell. Okay. This spore and here primary parietal cells converted into the parietal cells. Primary parietal cells converted into the parietal cells. Okay. Now, this mega spore mother cells again it will perform the meiotic division. Okay. That means you can say to undergo the meiotic division, they form the Linear tetrad of, just look at what I'm writing, just try to understand what I'm writing here, try to clear it, okay? Your concept should be clear. After meiosis, they forms linear megaspore, linear megaspore tetrad. They form the linear megaspore tetrad. I told already, uh, linear megaspore tetrad, and these li linear mega spore tetrad means one, 
irandu mundru nal so they have how many four is there and in these four are how many uh, person they are arrangement in the li linear manner so this is the linear so this is called the linear mega sport tetrad linear mega sport tetrad out of four in out of four three become degenerate means this will degenerate this will degenerate this will degenerate so out of four linear mega sport tetrad three become degenerate and one mega spore one mega spore become functional one mega spore become functional one mega spore become functional clear one mega spore become functional and this mega spore is going to formation of the mobule or you can say that i told the mega spore enzyme that is the ovule so it is going to formation of the embryo sac or female gametophyte so single mega spore it is going to formation of the female embryo oh, sorry female gametophyte okay i'm going to revise again just look it try to clear your concept firstly this cells this cells have the archesporial cells okay and these archesporial cells will divide they form the two structure one is called the primary parietal cell second is the sporogenous cells okay or mother cells okay and there one primary parietal cells they are going to convert into the parietal cells the primary parietal cells it is going to convert it into the parietal cells very good now this mega spore mother cells just look at here okay now the mega spore mother cells undergo the meiotic division okay the mega spore mother cell undergo the meiotic division after meiotic they form the four linear four linear mega spore tetrad four linear right. mega spore tetrad okay out of four three become three become degenerate okay out of four three become degenerate and one will be remaining okay one will be the remaining so now here you can say this is the one irandu mundrinal so how many there is there four in which three in which three these three become degenerate and one will be uh, as usual that means you can say this is known as the functional mega spore this is known as the functional mega so i'm going to write again in the very simple and tabular form just look it i told already first one is the archesporial cell archesporial cell this archesporial cells again divide they form the primary primary, primary parietal very good primary parietal cell and sporogenous cells second one will form the sporogenous cells now primary parietal cells converted into the parietal cell parietal cells and parietal cells and sporogenous cells is going to converted into the converted yes. into mega spore mother cell mega spore yes. mother cell mega spore mother cells clear okay now mega spore mother cell undergo again meiosis again meiosis yes. okay yes. they form the functional they form the mega spore they form the mega spore and this mega spore will be the linear and tetrad linear and tetrad here the mega spore will be the linear and tetrad okay and i told four mega spore formed after the meiosis of pollen mother cell sorry uh, mega spore mother cells so they form the four different uh, mega spore but out of four three become degenerate out of four three become degenerate clear and one one mega spores become functional okay one mega spores become functional which will be forms the mega sporangium now concept is clear now uh in the families i, I told already let us familiarize ourselves with the structure of typical angiosperm mobile the ovule is a small structure attached to the placenta by means of a stalk called funicle okay listen here what is the funicle suppose that this is the ovule and here that plant and they have the placenta this is the placenta 
so funical is the funical is the associated it is the association between it is the place place where place where ovule place where ovule gets attached with gets attached with place where ovule gets attached with okay what is the funical place where ovule gets attached with the placenta okay the place where ovules get attached with the placenta so this structure is 